All right, everybody. Ready to talk about Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? I'm not on the bed today, mostly because there's a lot of stuff that I actually want to talk about. And I realized the easiest way for me to get everything out uh, that I'm thinking about the game is to write it out. So I put on, I wrote on my computer, I wrote a little document, and it's not really a little document, it's a lot of stuff. So I'll be doing it, I'll be doing it here. Okay, and I'm gonna, I tried my best to get things out as I was thinking it. As I was thinking without any influence, without looking anything up, without researching anything. So, this is it, okay? And this one, I'm gonna be complaining a lot. <laughs> but there are a few spoilers. Uh, basically, I'm at the end of the, I'm at the end of the main story, I wanna say. At the end of the main story, and I'll be covering a few things that happen over the course of the game. So, if you don't want any spoilers, I'm not doing this spoiler thing. I'm not, I already got a lot of editing to do for this, okay? Uh, I'm not doing the spoiler thing, but I will spoil some stuff if you haven't played yourself. So if you don't want to watch this and find out, don't do it. You've been warned. So I've been having one complaint for this game over the course of the playthrough. I think since about the second island, it really hit me uh, that this game, for, for Pokemon to be an adventure series, this game is the least adventure of every game in the entire series. I'm gonna read off this document from now on, okay? For this generation to be so different from the others, not only in Pokemon designs and focus on different kinds of attacks, but also in character personalities and how the region is arranged, this generation is the least adventure-focused generation of them all. And it's mostly the fault of the map, or Rodon, whichever one you want to blame. Take your pick. Having the map on the touchscreen over the entire course of the game is a wonderful idea, especially in this game where there's stuff everywhere and it's easy to get lost at any time. I got lost throughout the entirety of my playthrough. The map though is what ruins the adventure aspect of the series. Anytime you look at the map, there's a red flag icon that tells you where you need to go next. My favorite part of any RPG is figuring out what I need to do next. After talking about the game with a few friends and mentioning it on a stream on the channel last week. A few people told me a few different things in response. The flag's not there for you, it's for younger players that just button mash to get through the text. You can still explore the world. Pokemon's not an adventure game. Older games were just as straightforward. You can just ignore the red flag icon. I'm gonna tackle all of these one by one and then I'm gonna say what I could change or what I would change about the red flag icon, all right? The flag's there for younger players that just button mash to get through the text. This one's easy. On the back of the box, or in the digital manual of most, if not all, of Nintendo's flagship series is a section that says, basic reading ability is needed to play this game, or something along those lines. As with any modern RPG series, if you're not trying to read a lot, then this might not be the game for you. It's all about storytelling. But let's assume you still don't want to read all the text that the game throws at you, because it actually is a lot of text. The game has other fail-saves to keep you from getting to the point that you missed what you need to do. The biggest of which is literally anybody that you meet over the course of the game that shows up in more than one place. Any character that shows up in a place other than where you first met them will tell you what you need to do if you talk to them again. For example, your first grand trial is against Island Kahuna, Hala, in Icky Town and Melamele Island. Pretty much any person you talk to at this point in the game will remind you of that. They might not tell you the town or the island because there's not too many places you can go or not too many places you have been so you won't get that lost. But the main characters that you've seen anywhere else will do that. So far that's your rival, Hal, that's uh, Lily, and then the professor, Professor Kukui. They will tell you that anytime you talk to them. They'll tell you that you need to do the grand trial against Hala, your first grand trial. This list of characters increases over the course of the game. And it in fact gets to the point where there's five characters on screen or in a certain area that will tell you this is what you need to do. And they all say it. Now one part of the game that does let you figure things out is the trainer school. And to be honest, this part was one of my favorite parts in the entire game. They, it, I understand how to play Pokemon. I played every main series game. I played a bunch of the spinoffs. I played uh, Coliseum and I touched XD a little bit. But the trainer school was my favorite part because they gave me a goal and they let me figure out how to do it. The goal was to beat four of the different trainers in the school. They didn't tell me where the trainers were. They in fact mixed them amongst other people who didn't battle. They didn't want to battle. So I'm literally finding the four characters myself. No help, no hints, nothing. 
uh, as far aside from the trials, that's really the only part of the game that let me cut loose. Let me go around and figure things out for myself. Now that's an adventure. You can still explore the world. You can, but why would you when the game is trying so heavily to remind you that this is the goal that you need to do and anything else means you're off track. The key word is explore. Explore means to investigate. I can't investigate if you're already telling me this is what I need to do. Anything else won't help me further this goal. This is what I need to do. For example, I remember the moment that I stepped into Howley City. I'm gonna butcher names because I'm bad with a lot of these, but I'm gonna go ahead and guess. Howley City, which is apparently Alola's largest city. There's a cinematic as soon as you get there that tells you all the different things of the city. You can go shopping, you can visit the tourist bureau, you can go to the salon and change your appearance, and then there's a bunch of other different things you can do across the city. That's perfect world building. That's that's amazing world building. Not only because you don't expect any of this to be the focus after you've done the trainer school. This is almost immediately after the trainer school stuff. But also because if you're familiar with Pokemon, you don't expect the largest city to be this early in the game. You normally run into it about halfway through the game. And when you don't run into it halfway through the game, you don't have everything accessed immediately. It takes time for you to come back. You do have full access around halfway through the game. Almost as soon as the cinematic ends, you're back to having the red flag on the map that tells you this is where you need to go. This entire huge city, this spot is where you need to go. Anything else is a waste of time. Why can't I figure out where I need to go myself? One of the common responses to this when I said this to some friends was you might get lost. Good! Good! Let me get lost. In an adventure game, I want to get lost. I want to figure out how to get back to what I need to do after exploring the world and putting myself out there. Think about it this way. You're on tour in another country. I know a lot of people haven't been on a tour in other countries. So I'll go ahead and explain. I'll break it down for you how it goes. There's always one major location or event that the guide wants you to see or that the tour is focused on. But the guide doesn't outright take you to this place that you want to go to or to this event or to this location. They'll show you some other things along the way that might interest you or that might they might think is cool. And they'll often even give you a time limit to explore a small area, to go out and see things for yourself. Normally it's pretty safe, it's a safe area for you to just be loose by yourself in another country. But they do let you go out and find things for yourself. They give you some time, they say come back here and we'll continue our tour towards this important location or this event. That's an adventure. Pokemon's not an adventure game or an adventure series. Pokemon is absolutely an adventure series. Most JRPGs are adventure series. Pokemon Ultra Moon and Ultra Sun, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, whatever, they start with the most commonly and most easily used trope for adventure, or for the adventure genre. You're a stranger to this new world. The easiest way to write an adventure story where others are taking the helm, so to speak, is to make them witness it from the viewpoint of a character that's not from here. That way, you naturally have to write it so that you explain how things work. You, you teach them what it means to be a Pokemon trainer in this case. You teach them what it means to go through the island trials. Because before this, before you moved here, you didn't even know it existed. The main character in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is a young boy or girl who just moved to this region with his or her parent. That's easy. That's easy because then you just introduce things one by one and explain it. This is an adventure. That's definitely an adventure. Especially since all of this stuff in this game is so new and different compared to everything else in the series. There, there were no island trials. They had gym leaders. There was, there, there was a Pokemon League. Apparently they don't have one here. All you have to do is explain what an island trial is, and then they'll naturally, any player will naturally compare that to the gym leaders of the previous generations. They'll, they'll be familiar with that. The Alolan forms is that completely. Alolan Raichu and Alolan Marowak and all the other ones are Pokemon that they're familiar with, but they don't have the same form. They look completely different, or they, they have some subtle changes about them. But this isn't a writer's workshop. This is, this is a very short synopsis on what I think about Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Uh, Pokemon's clearly an adventure series. The red flag icon is easily the de the most demotivating thing in any game that has ever made me feel like I didn't want to explore the land. It didn't hit me really until I got to the point where 
uh, I need to get to Victory Road. I need to go to Victory Road. Uh, I needed to train some more because my Pokemon, they're, they're not super under leveled, but they're not at a place where I'm comfortable based on all the fights that I've been having. And then I talked to a character who was blocking my way to enter another area. And apparently I needed to get the Z Crystal for Ghost type moves before I was allowed to enter that area. But I never found that out. The first time I talked to her, she said, oh, that's Ghost Steel Z. Sure, you can come through. I remember seeing her and the Pokemon she had nearby, but I never felt like talking to her. I felt like it would be a waste of time because that was out of the way of where I needed to go. The map wasn't telling me, hey, go, go, go this way. It's a waste of time. Older games were just as straightforward. In short, the older games in the series were only straightforward in teaching you how to play the game. Once you were taught the basic mechanics of the game, how to battle, how to catch Pokemon, how to interact with the main necessities of the universe, you were cut loose. You were cut loose and it was up to you. Each of these games have different ways of roping you off from areas you're not supposed to visit just yet. But there's also nothing reminding you of what you need to do to get there. For example, in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, you can't get to Vermilion City Gym without having cured the captain on SSN. The game, however, doesn't constantly remind you that you need to go to SSN or that curing the captain is what you need to do. In fact, you don't even find out that you need to cure the captain until you beat your rival. And to get there, you have to explore. There's nothing on the ship pointing you in that direction at all. Up until then, you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. You know that something's keeping you out of the gym, but you don't even know how to fix it. You can just ignore the red flag icon. No, you can't. It's intrusive to the entire playthrough. Remember this. I didn't play Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. Ultra Sun is literally the first time I'm playing a Gen 7 game. As such, I don't know where anything is. You would think, oh, then you want the red icon map on the map. No, I just want a map. I just need to see where I'm going, especially since the camera changes directions throughout you moving around the overworld or you out moving the world. So it's hard to get a good hold on what this land really looks like or where I'm really going. Now using the map, as you play the game, the only thing that shows up on the map is that red flag icon. There's no way for anything else to draw your attention on that map. It, it's just lines. It looks like it looks like a top-down look at the island, and then there's the red icon. There's no way that you can make notes on the map so that you say, "Oh, this is an area I wanted to explore when I had some time," or there was something here that I thought was important to come back and check out later. It's literally just that red icon. The only exception is when you're trying to fly to another area that you've already been to, in which case white feathers show up to places that you can land and then there's the red icon again so on top of the red icon being the only thing everything else helps it to stick out so chill you've done a lot of complaining what do you think they should have done okay so i originally had one idea but as i was writing everything out i came up with a second idea on how i would fix this red flag problem the first plan i thought was to make it so that you can choose whether or not the red flag shows up. It could be something in the options. You could have a setting that says red flag icon or or objective icon. Have that so it can be turned off. That way if you want it on, you can have it on. Or if you want it off, you can turn it off. If you want to get lost in the world, you can do that too. That way everybody's happy and everybody can play the game the way they want to. But then I thought that's that's not really that's not that's not something that should be done. In a storytelling way, that's not really cool. That's not really exciting. So then what I thought was we can give Rodom an actual purpose. Rodom doesn't have a purpose over the course of this game. He's there to be your buddy, but he doesn't do anything. He Imagine a rival that you never fight. That's that's Rodom. That's Rodom all the way. Uh, Rodon possesses more or less your Pokedex and he turns into like a living a living digital assistant but he doesn't assist you with anything uh, there was a point in the game where I received a Pokemon egg and Rodon decided it would be a great idea to make it so that the egg would hatch twice as fast and I appreciate it Rodon but I didn't really need that I didn't need that I did not need that at all there was a point where I reached an area that had 
a lot of trainers, way more trainers than any other area, and Rodon decided it'd be a good idea that after each battle, I received double the money I would normally receive. That's cool, Rodon. I appreciate it, but I didn't really need that. You know what I needed? I needed this red icon to be gone. So I thought about it. What if there was a button on the Rodon Pokedex that, that tells Rodon, hey, I'm lost. I need a little bit of help. Or, I don't remember what I'm supposed to be doing. Can you help me out? That would give him some character. That would make him a character that matters. Because Rodon right now does not matter. It is actually, <laughs> he talks too much for him to not matter. He's annoying and he talks entirely too much for him to not matter. That way, if I didn't want to hint at all over the course of the game, I don't have to, I don't have to have it and it's not a setting that I can switch off. But it's actually a story, it's a, it's a, what do they call it? It's a, a, a narrative mechanic that helps the game feel more like I'm traveling to a world that I haven't been to before. Or I'm, I'm, I'm cut loose in a world that I have no idea where I'm going. He could be my tour guide. Wrote on the tour guide. Give me the tour guide decks. How about that? That's more or less all I had to say. I'm sweating now. Now I'm bad. <laughs> I'm sweating now. I, I plan on doing a full review and that actually ended up being a huge part of it. Uh, I'll, I'll have a full review once I actually beat the game. I haven't beat the Victory Road yet. I'm still outside Victory Road. So I'll do that once I'm completely done with the main story. <sighs> I hope you guys are enjoying the game. Like I said, I'm enjoying the game. It's just this map, this whole map red flag situation makes it so that it, what I want to do with this game is is null and void. It's pointless. It's pointless. <laughs> I'll be done. I'll probably be done by the time this video uploads, all right? I hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, I'll catch you later with more here on Oakwood.